Uh, hello, uh, I'm Dr. Richard Abels, um, Professor Emeritus from the United States Naval Academy. And what I'd like to talk to you about today is the reign of Athelred II, known as Athelred the Unready, and the second round of Viking Wars, the Viking Wars which resulted in the Danish conquest of England. So the Vikings are going to return. Now the question is, why did they ever go away? Why is there a second Viking Age? What happened? The reality is that when the Vikings returned in 980, England had not had a Viking raid in about six decades. No now, I'm going to modify that a little bit. There had been Viking raids going on in Britain, mm -hmm. in the west of Britain. Wales had been raided. The western part of Britain had been raided. And the raids had been Irish sea raids. They had been from the Vikings who were settled in Ireland and the Vikings who had taken over the islands, like, like the Orkneys. Yeah. They were continuing to raid. But in the Kingdom of England, there hadn't been raids. Now, why hadn't there been raids? I think there were a number of reasons. For the first half of the 10th century, there hadn't been raids because the northern part of England was under Danish control. It was under control of Scandinavians. It was the Kingdom of York. And the reality was the Kingdom of York, which was often part of the Kingdom of Dublin, mm -hmm. that the Kingdom of York was itself a prize to be contested by would-be Viking chieftains and kings. And there was a tendency for those Viking chieftains who would otherwise have become raiders in the south, which was well defended, they preferred to try to take over York and take over the Kingdom of York. And that was one of the reasons for it. Um, Another reason for it was that there was a greater consolidation of political authority in Scandinavia, particularly in, in Denmark. The first Viking Age, in part, was a result of the continuous political conflicts within Norway, Denmark, and southern Sweden among powerful local magnates petty kings. Mm -hmm. And in order to be able to succeed at home, these petty kings needed wealth to be able to purchase the loyalty of followers. And the way you got wealth was by going abroad. The word Viking is not, and I never use a capital V with Viking. It's not a proper noun. It is not a name of a people. It doesn't mean Scandinavian. Literally what Viking meant and we get this from the old English sources, the term first appears in old English, what Viking meant was pirate. Mm -hmm. In Scandinavian, there were two words. Uh, one was Viking without an R, one was Viking with an R. The Viking without an R was an activity. Yeah, It was an expedition abroad in order to gain wealth. A Viking with an R was a man who went on this expedition, who went a Viking. So, the consolidation of authority by the Gelling dynasty, by Harold Bluetooth in Denmark, was able to impose order within Denmark and within Denmark's sub-kingdoms, southern Sweden mm -hmm. and Norway. Uh, Harold, in fact was able to impose his power by building a series of really impressive fortifications. Mm -hmm. uh, these are called Trelleborg circular forts because the first of them that was excavated was at a place called Trelleborg. Okay. They're really impressive. They're round fortifications. They had barracks within them and you can still visit them. One of the things that I found really amusing is that when I did go to Denmark to 
basically do a tour of of Denmark's historical sites. Uh, and uh, this was after a conference um, in, I think it was 992, uh, 1992 in Copenhagen on military aspects of Scandinavian society uh, from um, 1 AD to 1500, that nobody in the neighboring town that Trelleborg was in seemed to know where Trelleborg was. <laughs> The Danes were so completely uninterested in their Viking past because the Danes insisted that they were Europeans. When we finally, well, my colleague Bernie Backrack and our spouses got to Trelleborg, we found the first Dane who seemed to be truly interested in Vikings, and he was the curator, naturally. And I noticed that he actually had a pendant, a Thor's hammer around his neck. And I asked him about it, and I asked him about the indifference to Viking Pass that we've been countering. I was the only person at this conference to actually give a paper about Vikings. <laughs> I was really surprised. Um, and the curator looked at us, and he sighed, and he said, we Danes were once a powerful people, and then we became Christian. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was really funny. So Harold Bluetooth, and we get the term Bluetooth for our connection of uh, our electronic devices from him. Um, simply, there was a conference in Denmark, and they came up with Bluetooth because Harold had united all of the Danes, and hence, <laughs> if you unite all of the communication devices, it must be Bluetooth. Right. Harold Bluetooth not only united the Danes, he also converted them to Christianity. And basically, he deprived uh, the, uh, the people who would have become Viking chieftains of the opportunity to be Viking chieftains. He imposed order. That's one of the reasons for it. So what you have over here is basically a hi hiatus in this type of... Um, Viking raiding. You might ask, okay, why not raiding in uh, Francia? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the reasons for that was that Francia itself had adjusted to Viking raids, not by creating a consolidated central authority as England had, but they had gone the other way. What they had done was they basically decentralized into powerful duchies, and these dukes and counts built castles. Mm -hmm. They had their own defense in depth system. Basically, it was no longer really profitable to go a Viking. And in the case of Francia, one of the most tempting places would be the Seine River. And in order to close that off, uh, one of the Frankish kings, King Charles, known as the Simple, in 911, gave that whole region to a Viking warlord by the name of Rollo. And that region yeah. became the Duchy of the Northmen, Normandy. What he did was he closed the mouth of the Seine to all of these Viking, new Viking invaders. And those Northmen became Francified. They became mm -hmm. Frenchies. So the Viking, the Viking era basically had come to an end. And then it was revived. So why was it revived? It was revived in part because of the wealth of England. The Scandinavian merchants who dealt with English merchants who came to England reported back about this wealthy kingdom. And where there is great wealth, there is incentive to take that wealth. There was enough of um, still chieftains who were striving to become kings, especially in Norway, to be able to have that type of activity. And there were incentives within the Jelling dynasty itself to increase its wealth and therefore its power by obtaining additional loot by going a Viking. And so what you had was, because of the wealth of England, 
And because of the reports of the lack of English military power, you had an incentive mm -hmm. and an opportunity that was exploited. In the 980, the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, our main narrative source for the period, tells us that there was a new Viking attack, the Viking raids. Mm 